Hey everybody, in this video we are going to go through the What is a Buffer Intro Lab. So before we get started, I want you to take a few minutes, push pause on the video, and work through the pre-lab section. So you're identifying weak acids and weak bases, strong acids, strong bases, and then uh, you're going to do some particle diagrams. So on Pre-lab question number one, I said HCl is acidic, that's a strong acid. Sodium hydroxide, that's basic, that's a strong base. This is acetic acid, HC2H3O2, that's acidic, that's a weak acid. This last one was a bit tricky. Um, it turns out that this ion, this acetate ion, has the ability to take hydrogen away from something and so it does make it basic and that would be a weak base. All right, let's just take a quick look at our particle diagrams, make sure that we've got the concepts down. So HCl is a strong acid, so I should be showing hydrogen and chlorine ions dissociated, that is separated. Uh, you may have drawn the hydrogen as hydronium and that would be totally fine. The sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so I should be showing sodium ions dissociated from the hydroxide ions. And then the uh, acetic acid, HC2H3O2, that is a weak acid. And so for the most part, these are undissociated, so I should be showing the hydrogen connected to the uh, acetate ion and showing those as molecules undissociated because weak acids uh, barely dissociate in solution. And then this salt, sodium acetate, uh, sodium is uh, one of those NAPS ions that's always soluble, so I should show those sodium ions separated from the acetate ions. All right, now we're ready to take a look at the actual uh, lab part of this. And I got you looking straight down on my lab setup. So I got a couple of Petri plates out here. The first Petri plate, I have uh, some DI water. You can see it moving around, uh, 20 milliliters, along with five drops of universal indicator. The universal indicator, by the way, um, it changes color. The more red it is, the lower the pH, the more purple it is, the higher the pH. And so you can see I got, this is pretty close to neutral. It makes sense that's DI water. And then this one I've got uh, 10 milliliters of sodium acetate. I have 10 milliliters of uh, acetic acid. And then I've got five drops of that uh, universal indicator. And what we wanna find out is how much hydrochloric acid, I've got my hydrochloric acid solution here. How much hydrochloric acid does it take to get a color change? And so I'm gonna go ahead and add, count my drops. There's one, start with two drops of hydrochloric acid. Let's stir that up. And sure enough, that's a pretty dramatic color change right there. Uh, so that definitely has gone acidic now. Let's do the same thing with my mixture of sodium acetate and acetic acid. Add some hydrochloric. One, two, three, four, five drops there. Mm, hasn't really changed color too much, so let's keep going. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Not too much. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And now I think we're maybe starting to get a bit of a color change in there. It's definitely uh, acidic, so it's matching pretty close. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 
Uh, this mixture has done a good job of resisting a change in pH. So even though I'm adding hydrochloric acid, um, it's not changing pH too much. All right, so I got two new Petri plates and I've set them up again with 20 milliliters of deionized water with five drops of that universal indicator in the first one. And then I got my mixture of sodium acetate and acetic acid with the indicator in the second one. Um, this time we're gonna do just a little bit different. We're gonna add sodium hydroxide instead and we're gonna see how does uh, changing or adding sodium hydroxide affect the pH. Um, when we increase the pH, we should expect to see a purple color on this indicator. So let's see how much sodium hydroxide is required to increase the pH to above 10. So one, two drops, let's give that a stir. And sure enough, two drops did it. Let's try our mixture one, two, let's give it a stir. No change really. Keep going. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm, not quite purple yet. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Mm, not quite yet. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So let's see if that's it. Mm, not quite. 37, 38, 39, 40. Nope. Keep going. 41, 42, 43, 44. 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. And there's a color change. So we were up to about 53 drops of sodium hydroxide to get that mixture to change to a basic pH. So let's use our data that we collected and answer this question. What does a buffer consist of and what does it do? So first of all, a buffer is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. And the second part of that question, what does a buffer do? Well, a buffer resists changes in pH. So even though we added a whole bunch of that sodium hydroxide, we didn't see a big change in pH until uh, the very end. Same with the hydrochloric acid. For this question, we're gonna write out the net ionic equation that took place when HCl was added to this mixture. And so keep in mind that chloride and sodium, those are gonna be spectator ions. So essentially what we've got is hydrogen ions reacting with this weak acid. And remember, weak acids do not really dissociate much. 
so I show it all together. And we've got this acetate ion. Now, which piece of the buffer reacted with the HCl? Well, this is not gonna take an extra hydrogen, but this conjugate base, it can take an extra hydrogen. So this hydrogen reacts with that conjugate base, and what do you end up with? You end up with HC2, H3O2, and this uh, is essentially not involved in this acid neutralization process. So really, your net ionic equation is the hydrogen from the acid reacts with the acetate from the salt, the conjugate base, and makes H this weak acid. And this is something that occurs in equilibrium, so it goes both ways. We can do a similar kind of thing with the sodium hydroxide. So the sodium is gonna be a spectator, so we've got hydroxide ions. And this time, um, you know, if we think about, okay, we've got this weak acid, and we've got this conjugate base. Which one of these two things is it gonna react with? Well, I don't think it's gonna react with this conjugate base, but I do think that this hydroxide can take the hydrogen away from the weak acid. We can get then water and acetate ion. So when I go to write my net ionic equation, really it's hydroxide plus acetic acid makes water and acetate. And this is also equilibrium. So this is how buffers work. The conjugate base part of the buffer can neutralize hydrogen ions to form this weak acid. The weak acid part of the mixture can neutralize hydroxide ions to make water and that conjugate base. So now we wanna take a look at some particle diagrams. It's helpful for us to think about what's happening on the particle level. And so pause the video right here and then draw your buffer. I wanna see the mixture with um, five species of the weak acid and five species of that acetate ion conjugate base. So this is my drawing. I used a hexagon to represent that uh, acetate and then the weak acid has hydrogen attached to it. The free acetate ions are shown there. Next, we wanna think about what does it look like after we've added three molecules of sodium hydroxide. And I'm just gonna include the hydroxide ions, uh, get rid of those spectators. So after I add three molecules of sodium hydroxide, uh, I'm using a triangle circle to represent hydroxide. And essentially what happens is those hydroxides take a hydrogen away from the weak acid. So I'm gonna remove that hydrogen from a weak acid and the hydroxide is gonna react with that hydrogen to make water. And so your drawing should have three water molecules. Um, there are a couple of leftover weak acid molecules that have not reacted yet. And then there's a whole bunch of these acetate ions. Uh, we started with five and now we've got three additional ones. So after the addition of six molecules of sodium hydroxide now, basically, um, every hydroxide that we, or every weak acid molecule that we had, uh, had its hydrogen taken away. So if we started with five weak acid molecules, 
uh, we can make five water molecules. Um, all of the uh, weak acid now has made this conjugate base, that acetate, and right here, this is excess hydroxide. So now, after we've gone past the buffer capacity, you have excess hydroxide, and that's when your solution finally can take on a basic pH.